welcome to Sprinkler Talk. Sprinkler Talk is the name of our new e-channel where we're going to talk about a range of topics related to the fire sprinkler industry. Things like the latest innovations, industry news, technical bulletins and solutions for a better fire protection industry. My name's Andy Fisher and I'm part of the technical team here at Project Fire. We've got over 40 years experience within the industry. We design solutions that simplify testing, sprinkler system management, and also improve efficiency and sustainability for fire sprinkler systems. Today's topic is going to be all about flow switches, so I hope you find it useful and enjoy it. Okay, let's start off with what are they and what are they for? Well, these are designed for sprinkler systems, normally wet pipe sprinkler systems. Um, the water is inside the pipe, it's under pressure, and you have sprinkler head dotted around in the ceiling. Now, when there's a fire, the, fire, the heat from that fire rises up to ceiling level and it activates that sprinkler head. And I think we'll do, we'll do a video uh, in the future to explain exactly how that works. So once the water comes out of those sprinkler heads, say the water's under pressure, then that's going to create a flow of water down that pipe to feed that sprinkler head. So these flow switches detect that flow so that we know that there's been an activation. And also if it's a zone system for life safety, then we'll know which zone that activation has occurred in. So you can probably guess how they work. There's a, a plastic paddle that sits inside of the pipe and when there's a flow of water, then it pushes the paddle and then this, there's some electronics inside that red box, which I'll show you later, which pick up the fact that that paddle has moved position, connects a contact, and then that can send a signal to a fire alarm panel or other monitoring panel to say that you know, this is activated in that area. The flow switches come in different sizes, depending on the diameter of pipe that you want to fit them to. Most commonly, they're fitted using a U-bolt, so there's a, a hole drilled in top of the pipe and then you just slide the paddle inside and then there's a rubber seal here which creates a, a waterproof uh, seal and then they're secured in place using say a U-bolt there. The other type of flow switch is called a T-tap, so this is a, a T-tap flow switch. Uh, so this is called a, a T um, and it's screwed into the top of the T, hence the name T-Tap. These are mostly used for smaller diameter pipe, so your domestic and residential sprinklers for example would have this style and as you can see there's the, the small paddle inside doing exactly the same job uh, as its larger cousins um, but say for, for smaller bore pipe work. If we just have a, a closer look at, at this design here, so this is a system sensor flow switch so first of all, just to show you the, the top of the box there, we can see the approvals that it has, which again is probably going to be important for your sprinkler system. And there's some more information about the electronics um, going inside of it, and also about the litres per minute that it's set to. Now this is important because we want to know when there's one sprinkler head in operation. So we don't want a tiny amount of water going past to alert us because that's, that's a, a fire signal. We want to be sure that there's been actually been an activation. But on the other hand, we don't want to wait until we've got you know, a whole river going past in order for it to activate. So it's, it's got to be set right so we can have one sprinkler head in operation. Um, also on this box here we've got a nice big arrow which tells us the direction of flow. So when we're fitting our flow switch we get it the right way around because the paddle only moves in one direction. So we need to make sure that it's facing the right way because otherwise if we put it on the other way around when, we, when the flow comes it isn't going to move, we're not going to get a signal. We take the cover off and we'll see inside and see some of the uh, electronics inside that flow switch. So the first thing we see is, is this dial inside. This dial allows you to adjust the, the delay. Um, when this paddle moves, you can have the option of creating a, uh, a delay time for that actual signal to be sent on to the fire alarm panel. Uh, the reason why you might want to do that is because with a, a sprinkler pipe work 
um, maybe the change in temperature, the jockey pump coming in, the, there's certain fluctuations which mean that it is likely from time to time that there is going to be a slight movement of water within that pipework. And so you wouldn't want an alarm to be generated straight away because you're going to end up with a lot of false alarms, um, possibly evacuations, fire brigade called out, totally unnecessarily. So it's a good idea to fit a delay um, so you, you eliminate some of those false alarms. Now the amount of delay that you set, say so totally up to you, um, in the UK, under UK rules, it shouldn't be set any longer than 30 seconds of delay. Um, and that's why in the UK we have these dials here where the maximum setting let's say, is, is 30 seconds. So if I turn that back to, to zero and I pull the, the handle, you might be able to hear that on the video. You hear that click? That click is showing you that the activation is pretty much straight away. If I now turn the dial and set it to five seconds and pull the handle, we can wait a few seconds. Click, and we hear it activating after approximately five seconds. So, so that's doing its job. But you just got to bear in mind that that is an approximate dial. You know, it's not going to be exactly five seconds. It's going to be plus or minus uh, a few seconds. Um, also, you can see that this pin here. So when I move the flow switch, you can see that the pin moves across, and then it, it's a, a spring sort of wound device which allows for that delay to happen. The other thing, of course, we've got some terminal blocks here which allow us to connect some wiring to it to detect those signals elsewhere. We normally find that there's, there's two sides, so we've got sort of double contact to, to connect to. Um, Project File, we have a product called Zone Check, which again we'll have to do lots of videos on in the future. So, what we would do is we would wire one half of these um, contacts to the local key switch or IMM for that zone check so that we're receiving that test signal uh, locally and then the other contacts will be say wired up um, to a, local, a fire alarm panel monitoring system or again back to the IMM depending on what kind of system you're going for whether it's addressable or, or whether it's um, a more traditional system. Well that's it for today's sprinkler talk hope you enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the boxes below. Also, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Also, remember to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn to keep up to date with all the latest sprinkler news. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.